Hello again, my name is Kevin Bousquet and I'm a licensed private investigator with the Corporate Group Inc. I'm here in a surveillance vehicle with Paul Ancorn, who is a surveillance specialist, Key Facts Canada. Paul is going to discuss with us some of the needs we may require if we're on surveillance in a surveillance vehicle. Paul? Well, Kevin, the ideal apparatus for a surveillance van such as what we're in right now is what we call an auto pole. It goes uh, roof uh, to floor, is movable anywhere in the vehicle, and has standard tripod applications. Uh, regardless of whether you use an auto pole or a standard uh, uh, tripod, uh, some type of steady device is absolutely imperative uh, re in doing uh, vehicle surveillance. Sometimes you may even need to use special made uh, handheld steadying devices, such as a situation where you might have to abandon your vehicle and go on to foot with your cameras, in which case they would be mounted on the steady device and still enable you to get used documentation. Now, Paul, what happens, for example, if we're on a surveillance that's going to run, you know, longer than a couple of hours, say a full day, and I have to go to the washroom or I've got to eat, or what happened in that situation? Ideally, Kevin, uh, the surveillance operative doesn't want to have to leave his vehicle um, in a situation like that. Uh, you should be prepared for these things. Have some sort of facilities. I have the ultimate facilities in the form of a flush toilet. Any way you look at it, you should have some food capabilities and personal effects. I keep mine in a little box which also doubles as a stool that I can uh, use uh, to sit on when I'm videotaping when I can't sit on the back seat. I have literally done the surveillance without moving once for five days straight without moving uh, wow. because I had the facilities to do it. As we're talking of equipment, another piece uh, of an overlooked equipment is binoculars. Standard would be a 10 power uh, magnification pair of binoculars, good quality premium binoculars. Anything less than 10 power magnification has very limited uses to, uh, to an investigator. Now, Paul, when would we want to use a surveillance van as opposed to a car, for example? There are several situations where we might want to use a van as opposed to a car. We'd want to use a car for following the same individual in high volume traffic for a long period of time. It's a low profile vehicle, more agile. We'd want to use a van in situations where you're going to be sitting for a long period of time. One example might be if you're sitting in a residential neighborhood or, for instance, possibly you're uh, pulled up in a neighborhood and there's a school. You just happen to be near a school. Watch somebody across the road or maybe even uh, watching a child who uh, a, a mother might suspect an ex-husband is going to kidnap. People sitting in a car would draw the attention of neighbors, concerned neighbors, and report it to police as a suspicious vehicle. So you've got to be very conscious of uh, people around you uh, spotting you, and um, you don't want to be seen. Now, Paul, what happens, for example, if you're in a residential area, and the police, someone has called the police on you, and they've, they've basically determined that there's a suspicious vehicle? How do you handle that situation? A lot of times what we will do is uh, we will call the police ahead of time and let them know that we've uh, got a surveillance in progress or alternatively uh, we will leave uh, the area temporarily and uh, speak to the police officers as they're approaching the scene. Paul, thank you for being with us and thank you for watching the Private Eye Center.